Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today I am nowhere near home and totally out of my element geographically because I'm with these guys. Who you may recognize as Ike and John from Cars and Cameras. We're going to go dig around the woods and find a revival. If you follow some of these guys on YouTube, you probably already know that I recently took a trip to North Carolina to spend a week down at Cars and Cameras. The reason being that we had a very specific event in mind. Inspired by Cletus McFarland's Freedom 500, we decided to make our own version, the Backyard 300. The key differences being that we used go-karts for affordability, and we actually got invited since it was our own event. The 25 acres behind Cars and Cameras shop were put to good use that day, and we beat the heck out of some go-karts. After the main event, I found a three-wheeler for their rock crawl section and quickly discovered that North Carolina woods are quite a bit different from the woods in Iowa. How do I get out? I'm not, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to. This is not Kansas anymore. If you want to check out the entire video, you can head over to Cars and Cameras here on YouTube. Rather Be Welding and Red Beard's Garage also have unique points of views of each event in videos uploaded to their channels. Wanna get off the phone, son? We're family. This <laughs> is family time. Family time. <laughs> Once all the dust had settled and we had broken the last operational go kart, it was finally time for me to pick up a camera and do what I do best. <laughs> With that, we headed into the woods of Ike's multiple properties looking at cars he had left abandoned for years. The first stop brought us to an abandoned junkyard in the woods where we did not find any cars worth reviving, but we did find a Honda Trail 70. Dude, there's a Honda Trail 70 here. No, there's not. Yeah, there is. Really? Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Honda Trail 70 right here on the ground. No. Gotta <laughs> get the one without wheels to turn, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Right. There it is! Out of the junkyard! Oh god! <laughs> Sick of the mosquitoes, we decided to head to a few of Ike's sheds which were packed full of potential projects. Having only two days left until I flew home, we had to find the perfect project that we could get done in that short time frame. Dude, what is this? We call it the murder table. The murder table? Yep. That's something. Ike, didn't you see that in an auction and you were like, I gotta have it. Yeah, and then I got it and I regretted it. Eventually, we came to a place they called the warehouse where Ike had a special something hidden in the corner. I think in here is probably what you're going to want to mess with. I like the sound of that. It's been sitting since 1987. Holy cow. Uh, the motor's not stuck, uh, but that's all I know about it. I started on the doing some, some body work and brake work and then I stopped. Oh boy, I see all sorts of goodies. Oh, there There's is. a Nova. Yep. There's a Camaro. Second gen? Uh, that would be... 71? That's a 71. Yeah, 57 Chevy. 71 Chevelle. That's and the one you're talking about, isn't 65 it? 65 Mustang Fastback. There she is. Holy cow, that's like the exact color of my truck. Oh, it's even got the same exact black pinstripes my truck has. Not the same pattern, but orange oh. with black. It's too late for that. So this is what we decided to go with. This is the 65 Mustang that's been sitting since, what'd you say, 87? 1987. So she's been sitting for a while. It's got a 302 in it, automatic. Ike's been doing some body work and brake work on it. It's a beautiful car. Fastback, same exact color scheme as my F100, so it kind of hits close to home. So we're going to see if we can get her running for the first time and... Uh, numbers 33 years thank god john was here first time <laughs> in 33 years let's go ahead and dig this sucker out so we can get some light into that engine bay so you guys can see what's going on and start working on it here we go <laughs> sounds like your tractor yeah god that is weird Crank uh, left. Well, I'm, I'm good over here. Yeah, it's going to be tight over here, dude. Woo -hoo. No, just keep an eye on the right side there. That might have been the tightest squeeze I've ever seen for pulling a car out of somewhere. I'm alright. Do you want to go yeah, all the way out? Where are we going? 
Um, want to start there? And if we got to sure. move it, we'll move it. Yeah, that sounds good. I say we try to stay in the shade if we can. Yeah. Um, See if she rolls. Yeah, there we go. She's in here. Sweet. What all have you done to this car? Man, all I've done is the floor. They were in the trunk. And uh, I'm a little afraid of the engine. Quaker State. <laughs> <laughs> the floor pan looks brand new. Wow. Yeah, it looks incredible, doesn't it? You see you pour 15, the whole floor? The whole floor is pour 15. I've only got a couple of little patches uh, in the floor pans. A couple of little pinholes. Yeah, look at it. It's not even that pitted. That's incredible. And those are the original four pans. You guys have no idea how lucky you are down here. Yeah. This is nuts. Yeah, up front, we got a 302. It's pretty nasty. Someone, you think someone was like starting to restore this car and had all the paint done and then just never got to the motor? I'm not sure about the story. Uh, supposedly that engine's been rebuilt and either run for a few hundred miles or it's never been run. I want to say it's been run. Right, our water pump gaskets in it that don't look quite factory. Oh yeah, good, good call. We got Slickum in it. Did you put oil in this thing, Mike? No. Smells old and good, I guess. The car has been flooded Oh, a few occasions. I mean, it looks decent. I've seen a lot worse. It's right on the high mark. Dude, hit the key. This thing will light right off. <laughs> Is it stuck? The motor? No, I, I yeah, turned on it. Come here. Yeah, it's been. That belt is now, something if else, bro. that belt breaks, you're going to be going flying. For, for a ride? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, she got a tight spot. Uh, I mean, I also weigh like 85 pounds. Ah. Uh. She's a little sticky. A little sticky. Thinking moving forward, we should take this one easy because this is a pretty safe car. Let's pull all the plugs, throw a little bit of ATF down the cylinders. Um, I think our carb is seized. That is the pedal seized. I don't know. Want to hit the pedal see what happens? Yeah, if you want. Something's. Well, here. I might have actually, 15 the, the pedal. pedal. <laughs> here, here's a screwdriver. Let me just pop that off quick. Oh, well, the pedal's free. So the question, do we have any Holly pattern two barrels? Or a two to four barrel adapter, we flip upside down and put a good four barrel on. Could do that. I've done that. It works pretty dang good. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh no. Oh. Is it a two barrel? <laughs> it's a 770. Nice. All right, guys. This has got to go on the Mustang. It's, it says 300 to 500 horsepower. I mean, that's my instant good. three to 500 horsepower bolted on. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is exactly how science works. Yeah. Let's pull some plugs, get some ATF down there soaking, and we'll go get some parts, and then we'll come back and start plugging away. Let's do it. So the guys are headed off to the auto parts store to catch them before they close. I'm gonna go ahead and pull some plugs out and see what we can find. Winner. All right, there's one down. Doesn't look too bad. I got all the plugs in this bay out. They all look pretty good. No uh, water, no funny business. Of course, the outside's a little rusty, but uh, I mean, the inside looks pretty decent. So I'm going to move on to the other bay here. Same deal over here. Looks pretty decent. So we just returned from Mike's little magical store where he gets some magical parts and I had a heyday in there. We have this, a new original stock, probably 20 year old remand um, Motorcraft 2100 series two barrel. That, but good. 
Oh, it's a two barrel. Yeah, brand okay. new. We wow. didn't go for four barrel. That'll be next next week. Ike is shooting some PB blaster down the cylinders. We're going to see if we can get it in there. Otherwise, we'll throw some ATF down them. Let them soak for a little bit. John has pulled all our plugs. I like how I could just leave and magically, like, the next Things step. Things get done. Yeah, it's <laughs> done. This bay was a lot trickier than that bay. Was it? It was interesting. Yeah. I guess the angle of the dangle or something. <laughs> so, we're going to pop that carburetor off while that sits there and soaks in. And we'll, um... Just for good measure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, start going through our ignition system, make sure everything's good to go, and get this sucker running in no time. John's getting our base bolts off. I'm going to get all of our hoses and lines disconnected. And we will pop the sucker off, throw a new gasket on, put the new one on. Wow. That might be the hardest fuel line I've ever seen in my life. That's rubber. <laughs> There's a four barrel right there. Oh, yeah. Just chilling. Just chilling. Four barrel intake. I got all kinds of stuff, you know, gauges, vacuum pump. What do you need? We use that to test our vacuum vans, or we just suck on the tube. I um, think we just mash on the gas. <laughs> hey, look. Of course. 2100 right here. Oh. Right. Not that this one's any good either, but. Oh, that came off of a uh, 65 Mustang. Oh, that's right, John's working on cars. This is the car section of cars and cameras on Junkyard Dicks. <laughs> there it is. Ooh, it's, uh, oh, it smells so good. Oh, it looks it dehydrated. Wonderful. <laughs> dehydrated. Yeah, I need to drink some Gatorade, dude. Is it twisting the line or is it good? Um, I think she's actually going. Oh, yeah. It's good. Let me throw some PB on it if you're worried about her. Some peanut butter? <laughs> Alright. Ta da. Unless someone's put a different intake on, that's a 289 intake. But then again, they may have both been stamped 289, because I know the, like if you get a performance Edelbrock, the I was the told Edelbrock this was Performer, a, they're all Performer uh -huh. 289s. Are there like casting numbers we can run or something? Like these guys? Uh, Ford is not very good at that, unfortunately. Yeah. The best way to figure it out would be to measure the stroke with like a screwdriver. Well, or, you can also remove the valve covers and they say 289 yeah, on the it old says heads. 65, 289, then we would know it's a 289. Otherwise, you have to take the intake off and look at the bottom of the head for the casting numbers for what like cylinder heads these are. Really, really not ideal. The GM guys and the Mopar guys are like, oh, let me just look at these numbers. Blah, it's this. And Ford's like, nah. Well, <laughs> good luck. Yeah. I was told it was a 302, so. Hey, if it's a 289, cool. Did you, did you guys buy new plugs? Or? No, however, the oh, that, those, those are, are the big, big uh, spark plugs. Oh yeah, that's um 289s ran those. So this is this is a good chance that that's a 289. This is a 302 here. Where's the uh, spark plug ring? Here you go. This one's got big. Oh. So it's probably a 302. I think it might have been a an era thing. I think it was just an early engine thing. Gotcha. 65 and 68 289 both have big plugs, but uh, the small plugs didn't come in until the 70s. 289 ceased production in mid-year 68 when the 302 took over. All 289s from the factory larger, or came with the factory from larger 18 millimeter spark plugs. But so were the 302s and 351s until 75 or something. So it doesn't tell us anything. It just makes it old. It is definitely a 289 302 is as the narrow intake because yeah. the lower deck height. All right, so all right, we're ready for a carburetor. It looks like this is the thinnest gasket I think I've ever seen in my ever. We could always, um, you know, just for the video purposes, see how many people will get it. Use just a whole bunch of RTD. And... God no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Take those words back. Just kidding. Okay, so we're gonna pop our distributor cap off. You get a look inside this ignition system. That'd be terrible, I know it is. Actually, this is pretty. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. Pretty darn good. Our it is a point system, so that's good. Oh, look at the points. Yeah, that looks those bad. Are the happiest little guys in there. Let's see if we can get it open up. Got any sandpaper? Ah, uh, should. 
I'm gonna suck on these hoses and see if our vacuum advance canister is operable and see if it moves our points forward. It is indeed. Not very far, but it did move. I have a Debbie's points file. Wait, that exists? Have, yes. Oh, let's get that thing. What have I been doing for like three years now? Mm. Booga booga. Oh, yeah. Oh, that looks a little loose. Is that thing supposed to be moving around that much? Oh, it looks like there's only one pin holding him down. I'm sure he's okay. I love how they turned to powder and oh, disappeared. Oh, man, that don't look good. Mmm, yummy. All in all, they're not bad. What we can do is get a battery and wire this all up, and I should be able to open these and check this part, which is our next step. We're going to throw some power at this car, see what works, and then go through our troubleshooting process to ensure that our coil and points and distributor and everything is operable so that when it comes time, we go and this car fires. Time to put a battery in this guy. Oh, ow. You okay, yeah, dude? I got the metal penis in the forehead. Oh. That's the worst. Can't say I've ever been there, but uh, yeah, sounds sounds rough. Didn't that thing expire in like 94? 90. Oh. That, it says it's full. <laughs> <laughs> that thing expired three years after this car was parked. <laughs> Hopefully this thing only catches on expired fire. Get you a hammer here. Some hammer. Oh, I got an alternator light. Really? I got a horn? Aw. Radio! Now that we got power to the car, I'm going to go through the process of making sure our ignition system is operational. Quick explanation of a spark distribution system and distributor and coil and all that. So with this coil, you have a positive and negative that is always charged. Now when you disrupt that ground and remove it from the system, it interrupts the magnetic field inside and basically poops out 10,000 volts out of its butt right here, which is the coil wire, which goes to the center here and is distributed to each spark plug as per the position of the motor. Now, how do we time that ground? There's eight lobes on this distributor gear, which turns off the front of the camshaft. These eight lobes are all in relation to a cylinder. When these points are opened, it disrupts that ground. As you can see, you can kind of see, we have a spark here when I do this. Ow. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Okay, yeah, so that's working. But as those lobes come, yeah, there we go. And you can see it sparking out the coil right now. So every time one of these lobes comes and opens these points, it disrupts that nate, it removes that ground, all the power goes out. Now that will go from this coil wire into the center point of this cap through the rotor, which I lost. There it is. And depending on where this, this is looking at it upside down from the bottom, depending on where this is sitting, it will distribute to the appropriate cylinder, which is why timing is so crucial to make sure this guy's sitting at top dead center. So that's a real quick explanation of how these systems work. With that being said, we know we have spark. We're gonna go ahead and put this all back together, put our carburetor on, and throw some plugs in it, and we should be ready to hit the key and see what happens. So John's gonna roll the motor over a few rotations, get everything Freed up if it's sitting there, move the fluid we put in the cylinder up and down, get it around all the piston rings, over the old one, two. And then when we come to a stop, we're gonna put it hopefully at the number one cylinder, which on a Ford is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know the way numbers work. <coughs> Chevy. <laughs> Remember 10 minutes ago, he was like, I'm not a Chevy or a Ford guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we, uh, our new carb came with this big fat spacer and no gaskets unfortunately but the bottom one's shot too so if it's gonna have vacuum leak it's already gonna have vacuum leaks so we'll just use that old one for testing purposes amazing look at that it's beautiful Dang it, buddy. so we got our transfer slot set to a square our idle mixture screws are two turns out Everything's dialed in where we want it to be. We're going to hook up a fuel system, tighten down those base bolts. 
uh, put our ignition system back together, spray some carburetor cleaner down this, see if this thing starts making some noise. Only the finest for this fastback Mustang. <laughs> now this bottle of water has been sitting out for like, oh, no, two months. <laughs> Nailed it. All right, sweet. Yeah, she holds, holds coolant. I don't see any leaking out the front of the radiator. I also don't see any big oily spots, which is evidence of coolant, so it's probably a good radiator. I hear air fluid. Something. Uh, I don't see What anything. the hell? Oh, the heater core! No! The bottom of the car is full of water. It's coming out back here. No! Really? Yeah, it's running on the firewall. So the heater core has gone bad? Heater yeah. core is bad. That took a while to uh, puddle up yeah, and start coming out the floor. But it's running right down the firewall. That's bummer, man. Dang ol'. Man. Alright, it'll be fine. Uh, Like self conscious about saying it now. <laughs> it was a sad, it'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Alright. Yeah, go go give her the old tap. Or actually, if you want to just do it from right here, just um, touch you know touch this to here. Ah. Right. I'm going to amaze you some more. Now you have a button, don't you? I do. He's got a button. Fire extinguishers right there, guys. Right there. You're really optimistic about I'm catching on fire man. and no plugs. <laughs> You ready? Yeah, go ahead. Here we go. So we think our solenoid shot and our starter is probably not much better. You said this thing was underwater? This thing's been point? underwater multiple times. What is it with me and trucks that have been underwater lately? <laughs> well, for cars. I don't know, man. Oh, um, all right. There's a starter over here, man. Somewhere over there? Yeah. Oh, oh literally buried back there. <laughs> That's a Ford starter. Don't know if it's the right tooth count, but uh, we can pull Did the old one out. they have different tooth counts? Yeah, so there's a 164 and a 157 tooth oh, on no. a small block Ford. Right. This should be... I didn't know that. 157. I don't know. We'll just... Put it on there and see what happens? Yeah, pretty much. Don't tell me I have to rebuild another small block Ford starter this week. Or this month. Man, I don't yeah, think no. that one's good. Oh, oh, oh. Leave it on for a sec. <laughs> it ain't no good. Yeah, I suppose if you actually want to drive this car in the future, it's probably worth just right. 35 bucks and getting a new starter. Yeah. Dang. I should probably go ahead and pull the starter off. Yeah, let's get this up in the air, crawl under there, get dirty, and we'll be back when that sucker is off. How bad is it? It's pretty bad. <laughs> Now, while Ike was under there, he noticed something quite um, important that was absent. The spacer plate that you need on the back of a 302 right here that goes between the block and the bell housing is totally missing. So uh, what that does is centers our starter so you don't need shims or anything. So we're going to have to do one of these and hope that it will be fine. You get it. <laughs> I'm glad you do. O'Reilly's and food. What do you say? Sounds good. All right, so we got parts. We've had food. We're losing our light. So we are going to hit it here, and if anything cool pops up, we'll let you guys know. Otherwise, we're just going to throw a starter and a solenoid on and get this sucker fired up. Is this the same as the other one? I hope so. It, it's close. It's actually a starter <laughs> from an 89 Mustang since they didn't have any O'Reilly's, but yeah, it'll be fine. Oh, yeah. Three hours later. Oh! Yep. Well, it spun over, didn't it? Yeah, Sweet. starter works. Hit it again. Wait, did it turn the... Ready? Yeah. That, that sounds, sounds terrible. terrible. <laughs> sounds like a badly shimmed Chevy. <laughs> so I think that's because our plate's not there and our tooth engagement's either too far or... I wonder if we can do one of these with the starter since there's no alignment plate. It's pretty much bolt straight up. Yeah. It still spins though. It spins. Well, she screams like heck. Yeah, it's not very pleasant. That's but I went under and I looked at it and the teeth engage fine and everything looks like it's spinning fine. It doesn't quite kick the Bendix specs out, but we can deal with that later. Hopefully it does when it gets some RPM. So we're gonna throw plugs in it and see if it comes screaming to life. Oh. Uh, I'll
I'll leave. That's fine. <laughs> can we put this thing down so I can reach? <laughs> We're going to fill our bowls with the vents. So as soon as this thing lights off a little bit tonight, and then we'll come back tomorrow for the rest. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah, I'm preparing for this belt to snap, so I'm going to step out of the way a little yeah. bit. All right. All right. All light is on. Go ahead. Here I go. Oh, that's gonna be. I don't think it's gonna kick out. That sounds horrible, that guys. That is terrible. Yeah, I don't know about this one. Maybe we need to get some washers in there in the morning. Go home and research it. It did fire a few times though. Yeah. yeah but it's dragging the starter. Yeah. I need to go home, do some research on starters, see what the hell's going on, see what we can do to band aid the fact that we don't have that plate without ripping a whole motor out. Uh, we're all hot, sweaty, and tired. It's good 10 o'clock at night now. So we're going to call it for the night and come back tomorrow with more knowledge and a different game plan. We'll see you then. And just like that, it's the next day. I did some research last night. We found out a couple things about starters, learned some stuff here and there. We got a different one this morning. Ike is going to throw that in and try that out. Meanwhile, I'm setting up a fuel system with none other than a go-kart gas tank because, you know, this is charging cameras here. So, I'm going to get something set up for that. And meanwhile, off in the distance, John is working on getting a Honda ATC 70 going for the first time in God knows how long. We snagged these on a hell of a deal this morning, so he is fighting some electrical gremlins for spark, and that should probably just fire right off and ride around just fine. This is the new one we tried. This is a similar old one. Um, there's something goofy with the way these new ones index comparatively to these. I still haven't figured it out. If you guys know, let me know in the comments. That one's from an 89 Fox. That one's from, it's a D2AF engineering code. Go ahead, sir. All right. Contact. Sales sounds bad, but not, not as, as bad. bad. Not as bad, right? Yeah. yeah. It just sounds like an old, worn out. Ford and, starter now. And that could be from that plate not being there. Yeah, I think it's the plate and the fact there's a bunch of rust on those teeth. <laughs> Vehicle capacity loaded 150 pounds. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> so that means I'm the only person that should actually be riding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready, right. sir? Yeah, I think. It, you got the gas? I'll run the gas. The, uh, yep. We've got power now. Let's, um, See if she lights off and see if the Bendix disengages or if we're gonna have to put washers in or whatever. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Hmm. I did. Try that. Ready? Yep. Contact. <laughs> I think our timing's a little goofy. Uh, it uh, well, it, it tried. Oh, it still smells terrible. Yeah, it's still pumping poopy gas out of that uh, okay. fuel pump. So let's uh, let's try get a fuel system set up. And oh, well, well, we could do that. Try yeah. for a little bit more permanence, right. I guess. So far, so good, buddy. The starter disengaged. Yeah. And it was running normal. Yeah. Let's do it. Ready? All right, man. We got our fuel system set up. Yeah. Should be good to go. Yep. Let's uh, put some fuel to it. Crank on it and see if she goes. I'm gonna remove these tools so nothing falls into anything. That's probably a good. Idea. This thing's probably got a monster cam in it. We don't want it shaking everything off in the <laughs> electrical or the fan. My concern is that belt. I, I would stay away from that belt. Yeah, I'm gonna try to keep my body not in this plane right here. So, uh, yeah. Let me, uh, let me lock our choke wide open, because I think it's just choking oh. itself out. Maybe I'll turn off the fuel. Oh, yeah. I'll run your gas from up here so I can see what's happening. Alright, watch out for that belt. Yep, go ahead. Here we go, contact.
So it kind of runs on six cylinders. Well, mostly. Uh, I guess we probably need to get a belt since the belt exploded. <laughs> Immediately. Is that what that big pop was? Maybe. Maybe. Um, this is all that's left of it. We're going to need to get... <laughs> like, where did it go? <laughs> Where's the rest? I don't know. I guess we're going to have to get some plugs. Yeah, we're probably going to need plugs. It kind of seems like it might be... It sounds really weird. Like, maybe intake. we have two of the plug wires mixed up. We could. We can double check it again. Make sure it's the right firing order. Yeah. Because it is really, really shaky. And it backfired once, although the timing didn't like seem to ever do that again, which I've seen when it does that. It's usually the firing order is mixed up. So we'll double check our firing order. Maybe throw some new plugs in it. Um, and then try to dial in some timing and mixture screws. I'm wondering if we run our mixture screws all the way in. If they, um, if it'll run better, which means bad power valve, because it, that carburetor's been sitting forever, even though it's new. It sounds like it's got a terrible. Yeah, it vacuum sounds like a leak. crazy vacuum leak, but it's from the actual carb itself. So I don't, I don't know what the story is with that. Um, I did notice it was really flooded, and I had to hold it wide open for a yeah, while, and yeah. it started stuttering to life. So it might yeah. have a fouled plug even. Yeah. Although with that much RPM, it should clear it up. So all right. Plugs, belts, this, that. We'll be back. Isn't this like sunflower seeds or something right here? Oats? Sunflower yeah. seeds. Yeah, sunflower seeds came out of the exhaust there pipe. It was there. John. He was eating them yesterday. That yeah, was me. So as you saw, this thing idled pretty damn rough. Or even kind of ran pretty rough. Definitely wasn't hitting on all eight. We're going to pull number one out because I can remember it's earlier when he was trying to feel for compression to find the top dead center and whatnot. He didn't feel anything. We're going to try it again now that it's had a heat cycle and oil and stuff moving throughout it. But yeah, we verified our firing order is correct. Um, we checked for vacuum leaks. There's really nothing on this motor that has vacuum ports. So we're just going to see if we happen to have earlier noticed that there's a totally dead cylinder or not. I hope not. I hope not as well. Ready? Yep. Wow. We got a stuck valve there, I bet. Maybe. We could pop that uh, valve cover off. Valve cover off. Someone say stuck valve? Yeah. Probably. That would explain why it runs so bad. Yeah. Let's uh, pull a valve cover off, see if we got springs that are holding up, that push rod, this or that, and the other. Well, Ike's doing that. What are you up to, sir? Oh, nothing. Just uh, throwing new coils in this thing. So we had some tomfoolery happening with the old coils. One of our coils was getting unraveled in there and just old, and we had some new ones sitting around. So I already have this one installed, and now I'm going to replace this one. And I'll reinstall the flywheel, and we'll see what happens. If you guys want to see the conclusion of this video, it will be on Cars and Cameras. You yes, can check indeed. that out right hither. We are I, now a part of the Junkyard Digs Extended Universe. I had someone in the comments the other day, they were like, I love how Vice Grip Garage and Zip Ties and Bias Plies and the Boss Garage are all part of the Junkyard Digs Extended Universe. Where all the cool guys go. <laughs> I guess. Wow. Whoa, it's been painted inside. What? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh. Holy crap. Is this just loose? Uh, did the stud get pulled out? The stud got pulled out. Oh my gosh, I've never seen that. Did it's because it? the valve is stuck. I ran into this once before on an old 327. The valve was stuck, it pulled the stud. and I cranked it over and it pulled the stud out of the head. I've never seen that happen. Yeah. That was interesting. And the push rod. We'll pull the push rod out to see if it's uh that. Hey, this is definitely a 289. Really? It's got 65 289 heads. Awesome. I I was hoping it was a 289. 289 stamped right there. Man, hopefully that's a stock engine. There's a chance it's a stock engine. We should probably pull both valve covers at this point and check for stuck valves throughout. Because I've seen if engines have one, they usually have many. So how do we get that stud back in? I mean, how else are you going to get it in? Bam. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. 
Oh yeah. Oh see? look at that. Look at that. She gooey. Oh yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna spray blaster on say, every single one of them. It's moving. Let's see if we get some blaster yeah, and one, one of these. Yep. Well, this is uh, rather unfortunate, buddy, but um, maybe we can work through this. Yeah, I think we can make it through this. Yeah. <laughs> Mm, look at that return rate. Yeah. Springy. 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 Ooh. That guy feels like I'm hitting solid metal. I'm being very gentle to try to hit right here on the flat plane. No, this is not ideal. Oh, there's another gooey one in the back. All the way in the back. So it's this first one. Numero un. Alright. So that one's gooey. Which one's this guy here? Is it that one? Alright. And, and then the last one. This one. And this one's like stuck. We'll work it loose, buddy. Wow, it's hammering down. That's gonna be a uh, down with the hammer, up with the piston. I don't. I don't ever like. I don't like doing anything we're doing right now. But when it comes hey, to man. revivals, and an engine needs a rebuild anyway. I mean, I was told this engine was rebuilt. I mean, looking at the, the yeah, looking at it, it looks like they just pulled the valve covers off and painted it and put it back in. Yeah. There we go. Anybody over here look floppy and hanging out? Actually, no. Huh. They look good. Let's give her the old test. Good. Good. So far, so good. These two might be a little gooey. Yeah, they all do that. What we're gonna do now is go through and PV blast all these, trying to get them moving in the valve guides. Then any of those studs we hammered back in, we're probably just gonna have to reset our uh, valve lash on, to make sure everything's happy. So that's a bunch of stuff. That's a bunch of numbers, and we only have a little time. So we're just gonna knock that out. If you're curious how to set valve lash, Thunderhead 289 has a video right here. Check it out. Yeah, that sounds normal now. I think it's uh, working free, dude. Well, there's one. Let's keep at her. Oh, yeah, that's, that's looking that's good. way better. That one's a different story. We might have to give this one the satellite method. All the way to coil bind, and then back up with the piston. <laughs> is that what you did with that one? <laughs> hey, it worked. That car runs great. Our vacuum needle is dead steady. Oh, nice. Didn't even bend the valve. I think it'll be fine. I like your thinking. Is that it? I think that's it, dude. Dude, hell yes. We have potentially 16 valves. Well, you know, I think the car's worth getting uh, uh, maybe some new heads with some screw in studs and a cam. Yeah. And full just, barrel. Just a good mild 289 build. I want to keep it 289. I would too. I want it 289. I'm thinking like a just a little bit of a lope to it. Oh yeah. I'm gonna spin this thing over with all the plugs out. Yeah, plugs make sure out no and uh, look at the whole drive train and make sure everything's functioning. Hell yeah. Here we go. Valves. You got valves? I got valves. Alright. We need to get valve cover gaskets. Yeah. We also could use some hamburgers. How about a quick lunch break and then fire it up when we're back? I like your thinking, dude. John, you get that thing running yet? Working on it. Well, yes, technically it ran and it went on two wheels and it kind of did wheelie, but it was running like absolute crap, so I'm adjusting it once again. Sounds so good, though. <laughs> what are you digging for? Man, I know I have some valve covers here somewhere. Yo, this thing's cool. Ah! Look what I got! Holy crap. What? What's this say? Ford Motorsport? Yeah! Dude, yes! Those have to go on. You got two of them? Yeah! Oh, hell yeah. Ford Motorsport. Those are old. Are they? I think so. Well, they'll look good on the car. Oh, hell yeah. That's all that matters. These things are probably older than me. Probably so. New old stock stuff.
They're fell pros and they say uh, Detroit gaskets on them. Like, I think for once in our lives, we can actually say that we're adding 100 horsepower with a hammer. Because we uh, freed up probably 100 horsepower with the valves. Man, oh man. Man, that is a hell of an upgrade, I'll tell you. It looks way better. Um, you know what? I think I might have found... Uh, yeah, there's a couple of cavities on the bottom of this carburetor. I can feel this one, and it goes right in here, right in between the flaps. So we probably have That's our vacuum leak. Huh. Ike is going to chop off our trans so we're not spinning that sucker dry. We have put a new gasket on the bottom of the carburetor to alleviate the issues that we had where we had a massive vacuum leak from behind. We have three valves that have been freed up. Sorry, three cylinders, four valves total that have now been freed up. Um, we're going to dial in our timing once it fires up. Play with the mixture screws. Plugged off the PCV. Got shiny chrome valve covers. I pretty much can't think of anything else to make this run any better, so I'm hoping we hit the key and it lights right off. You ready? Yep, go ahead. Contact. She's chooching black, so let's uh, close down our mixture screws. They're out of two turns right now, so I know it's too much. Give it a little rev. Ten That's maybe? the ore top this center. Yeah, it's about ten, I think. I can't make it out, man. Over here at the edge of the light is thirty. 20, 10. 10. Yeah, that's pretty good. We yeah, have radiators leaking like crazy, dude. Yeah. yeah. Give it a rev. Let's see if we have uh, any in advance. Any advance? I bet we don't. Oh no, we do! The, advance, the vacuum advance is working perfect. That's not bad. That's amazing, dude. It's a little lumpy still, but. That's not bad for uh, what we have there. No, we could still have some valve issues. I bet. It uh, might have to just be run. For the first time in 20 years, not only does it run, but it drives. Look at that. Dude, that thing is sexy. Hell yes! You did it, boys! Yeah, man! Lighting rolling in, yeah. bright orange Mustang. 
This may be the most cinematic revival we've ever had right here. <laughs> All right, so that's gonna do it for this episode of Junkyard Digs down here in the North Carolina edition with cars and cameras. I had a great time hanging out with these guys. And I actually came down here to do a huge go-kart event we set up, we called the Backyard 300. Yep. You can check that out on their channel. We had a bunch of channels come down and we raced the hell out of some go-karts on their property. So check that out, links right here. I had a fun time, thank you yeah. guys very much. Dude, thanks for help on the Mustang. Yeah, man, uh, appreciate it. The 70, the all the, all the poor decisions we've made. So many poor decisions. Who knew there would be so much fun? I will definitely be back here. These guys are going to come up north. There's going to be a lot more to come in the future. So we'll see you next time on Junkyard Digs. Make sure you go subscribe to my friends, Cars and Cameras, Ike, It'll Be Fine, Junkyard Mook, Thunderhead 289, Dylan McCool, The Boss Garage, Vice Grip Garage. The Extended Universe. The, ex the Junkyard Digs Extended Universe. We'll see you guys next time. Okay, so Holy cow, talk about the nick of time. Look at that coming down out there. Dude, we were just in time. Last registered, 87.